Welcome back to the Salty Spittoon Boys. We're here with another Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel video. Today it's going to be another round of my local tournament from last week. This is going to be my salad deck versus a very weird casual deck. Uh, this is going to be an Odd Eyes uh, Pendulum Dot deck. Like, literally, it's like an Odd Eyes deck. And uh, if you guys want to see the deck profile of his deck, it's just a fun casual deck. But nonetheless, it seemed really, really cool. So I did get his deck profile. If you guys want to see that, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe down below. Uh, very much appreciated. Uh, I believe uh, he wins the dice roll, and I have to read some of these cards because I'm just not familiar with the Odd Eyes archetype at all, but he goes Spiral here. I believe that lets him get his Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon. And uh, also, quickly want to let you guys know that if you guys want any of the cards you guys see in any of these duels or any other cards, use uh, use my affiliate link for TCG Player down below. It doesn't cost you anything extra, it just gives a little kickback to the channel. So, it means a lot. So he ends up going Duelist Alliance out after Odd Eyes Pendulum, and he searches himself uh, Pendulum Paradox, which I hadn't seen in a while. It's the one that adds do two Pendulums back. Uh, it's really cool. I really like it. And he plays uh, the other Pendulum guy. I am, I'm terrible with these names, so forgive me, but uh, obviously for the voiceover, it's a little bit difficult. So he plays the other Pendulum guy. That's the one where, like, if uh, if he ends up popping, uh, you know, Odd Eyes Pendulum, I think it lets him get out another guy, which is really cool, but... Uh, when he actually activates Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon, I was checking if it was a cost there. I end up Ash Blossoming it uh, because it adds it to hand. So I just wanted to double check that. And it's not a cost to destroy it. So I open up with Lady Debug getting Gazelle. And here I feel pretty confident that I might even actually, if not kill him this turn, at the very least be able to, uh, you know, solidify my victory in this first game. Because uh, it just, I don't know. It, it's like, it's one of those things where you have an empty board, your opponent doesn't have anything. As long as they don't have hand traps, you just feel so comfortable. Now, I'm not playing the update jammer stuff. If I was, I would easily just be able to just kill him right here. Um, so that's a little bit of a downside. But it just, I feel like it doesn't happen that often that the opponent has a empty board like this and you can just do all your stuff unhindered. It's very far and few in between. So I found myself preferring a lot more of the utility based cards, whether it be like Baguska, whether it be. Um, you know, like, uh, either potentially a second Stallio if you guys play that. Uh, really just anything else that has, just has more utility in the deck. Um, I mean, Crusadia, Avermax, just stuff like that in general just has far more utility and applications than just having an empty board. And usually when your opponent has an empty board, you can still do quite a bit of damage. Um, but here I'm just doing all the standard salad plays, uh, just trying to get out, um, you know, Sunlight Wolf and all my stuff. Now, I don't end up relinking immediately here. I actually want to go Heat Leo to spin back his guys, and then I believe I Heat Leo him again, or I Phoenix him, or something like that. Or no, I actually end up using Foxy to pop the Odd Eyes uh, Pendulum Dragon. And I popped the Odd Eyes second uh, after I spun the other guy back, because had I popped it, it would have uh, gotten him a free uh, card off of the other Odd Eyes monster. So here I'm just going to go Heat Leo, Mirage, and Falco on board. Um, I believe I still am in a good position. I haven't relinked yet. I mean, you guys can see I have quite a bit of cards in hands. I think I'm trying trying to figure out here how I can kill him. Um, and I end up going for Super Poly here right after, and that should be enough for game, if I'm not mistaken. I just have to use the correct one. So this is more than enough for game, I believe. Um, we end up scooping it up. So this is a very quick game. Um, Super Poly, like, that's the thing. A lot of people keep asking me why I keep playing it. I, my locals, like, despite there being some rogue decks, there's really, like, in the meta right now, I feel like the best, most represented deck, it tends to be, like, a lot of the Orcist variants, and there's quite a lot of other dark decks out there. And, and really, it's just a card. It's n You don't play Super Poly Knight. So many people ask me this in the comments. It's not really a card that you utilize to disrupt your opponent, so to speak, like, preemptively. Like, yes, it's a card that allows you to do that, but the thing is, it's it's not meant for that. It's one of the few cards in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, like, Raw Sphere Mode, um... You know, Super Poly, cards along that nature, the Wobble Golems, a lot of these cards, the Kaijus, a lot of these cards where you can just have, and a lot of the times when your opponent has an already established board, you can just try and break it apart to some capacity. And that's what Super Poly does, and, and that's why I like it. Now, I don't think it's, you know, the, the fact that I can utilize it on my turn if I happen to be going first, I think it's much better going second because you do have to discard a card. Um, you can use it going first, but oftentimes, even if I am going first, I don't tend to set it because if your opponent can make a board and reestablish it, um, a lot of the times they'll get rid of your back row first, and then they'll kill your board. So what I like to do is I like to just keep the Super Poly in hand unless I'm just killing my opponent or activating it immediately. Or potentially just keep it in hand to discard for something like Phoenix or something else of the sort. Now I have been using it quite a bit lately to get out Super Violet Chimera, just as that final bit of damage like you guys just saw there. And uh, we quickly begin game three here. Uh, obviously we side decked. I think he he actually made me go first if I'm not mistaken, which was a little bit odd. Um... 
I mean, I guess maybe it's a Pendulum deck. He can push through stuff. I'm still not familiar with everything he can do. But I end up setting up the Buffalo play with Bailings here. Just to get some draws, get my engine going. Uh, we're going to get out Spinny. And we're going to Will out here a second Spinny. So not too great. But it does get us into our Mar Mirage Stallio. I've noticed lately I've been drawing uh, really awkward hands for some reason. I don't know why. I think it's just, uh, you know, just those, those, those games where, uh, you know, things don't go perfectly the way you envision them to go. But... You still find a way to get there, and uh, you guys will see some of the duels from this week's tourney, and so on and so forth. There were some really insane duels there, a lot of cool, fun decks, and um, yeah, you guys, are, there's a game and a couple videos that you guys will probably see, or a match that you guys will see, where like, I drew like the absolute like worst possible hands with this deck, I, I make the comeback, and like, man, I end up like punting like no other. So, spoiler alert, I won't tell you guys which match that is, or when that video will be coming, but you guys will know it when you see it. Man, it was, whoo! It was a rough one, man. Your boy ended up hunting like he's a, like he's just a, a terrible NFL player, man. But yeah, so we end up setting up uh, Rage here. He ends up reading it. He actually thought that uh, Sky Iris would protect him because Sky Iris is actually really good against my deck. I can't target any of his things, basically. But luckily, Rage does not target. The only thing that it targets is the initial Soundman Great that's relinked, if I'm using that effect. So he does go uh, Chronomaly Chronograph here. And you guys are going to see... Uh, he's going to go Odd Eyes Fusion, which is really cool. Like, the fact that he can just do this, just get a free fusion, free fusion out to get out his Odd Eyes Vortex. And then because my monsters aren't attack, I believe it lets him spin that monster back. Um, you know, normally under, under typical circumstances against Pendulum decks, I like to bring out my monsters that I can in defense. So he can't do that because I believe it can only special summon and attack, uh, spin the attack mode monsters. So he does end up spinning the Mirage Stallio, I believe, here. Um, and I think I have a face down... I don't know if it's a counter trap or something else, but he ends up activating the spiral spell, whatever that thing is, the phantasm spell, or whatever that thing's called. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, it's a really cool ultra rare. It's the main uh, Odd Eyes card. Uh, it just lets him search anything, essentially. It's actually really good. I think if Odd Eyes ever gets good, like, that card would be, like, like, if it ever gets super competitive, that, that card would be really, like, just an easy three of in the deck. So I believe I end up protecting with Bailinx here, if I'm not mistaken, or I consider it. I gotta double check here. What do we end up doing? Um, yeah, this game is a little bit odd because of that Odd Eyes, pun intended. <laughs> odd Eyes is actually just like a really debilitating card. It's a big body and has negation, so I did end up protecting there. On my turn, I end up going Debug. And here I'm just trying to get some value off the Sunlight Wolf without using it immediately. Because I, 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 the thing is, with Sunlight Wolf and Debug, he, you know, he still has Odd Eyes Vortex that he can very easily negate anything with. So I think he's being very careful to not waste it, but also like use it at a very impactful moment. So I end up getting foul here, or I think I'm, I end up considering getting foul. I don't know. This is like a really weird search. I don't, I don't remember what my hand was, but I think here I'm just trying to like put myself in a position where I can clear the Iris, maybe clear the uh, the other Odd Eyes card because I can't really target um, many things because of Sky Iris. Um, I believe it's just the Pendulum Monsters for Sky Iris, but nonetheless, it's still just like a really impactful card against this deck. Like, it's, it's actually really, really underrated, and um, I think Sky Iris in general is one of those cards that, that produces such a such a debilitating moment if you're, you're playing a deck that has a lot of targeting, that has a lot of cards that, that need to actually interact individually with cards rather than, you know, blanket destruction or, um, you know, just producing a whole bo board on your own, so... Ideally here, I think I'm just going to um, utilize Spinny, uh, get a couple more monsters out on the field. Um, banish the Spinny, obviously. And I'm going to go Phoenix here. Phoenix uh, is great because it obviously is going to give me the opportunity to uh, get a free draw off of the Sunlight Wolf. Because it is co-linked and we're going to get out Gazelle here afterwards after uh, everything happens. Because uh, we did discard a Foxy, so pretty cool here. It's just we can kind of keep snowballing my opponent. Uh, usually with a deck like this, with the Salmon Great, it really plays similarly to Gear Gears in a lot of ways. Uh, and the reason, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you guys in today's day and age, if you guys haven't played um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, you know, prior to, let's say, like 2015, 2014, uh, you might just be unfamiliar with them. It's one of those decks that plays similar to Salmon Great, except the fact that it is a little bit slower, I would say. It tries to just snowball the opponent, it tries to accumulate advantage, it tries to accumulate little monsters on the field that ideally end up turning into some bigger monsters and can have this recursion effect. Like, if you really think about it, Sunlight Wolf is kind of like a Gear Guy again. Uh, you know, Gazelle uh, and Cyanite Mining and all that stuff is kind of like Gear 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 slash, uh, you know, slash Gear Gear Armor in a lot of ways, mixed with Accelerator. Like, there's a lot of things. Like, all these, like, little monsters, they just make bigger things. And here, he, uh, 
Let's see what we're gonna end up doing. So we end up going Mirage Stallion. I know here at this point, I'm like, I have to bait out that Odd Eyes at some point, and I think he ends up, uh, I think he ends up deciding to negate the Mirage Stallion, if I'm not mistaken. And I believe I still have access to Will here. But he ends up letting the Mirage Stallion go. Um, and I think earlier with the thing with the Foxy was, uh, there was a little bit of circumstance where he actually thought he could negate the Foxy when it comes out. But it's actually one effect for Foxy. You want to be aware of that if you're playing against this deck, whether you're playing uh, back rows, face-up spells and traps and stuff. Like you, you can't negate the Foxy destruction when it already hits the board because it's a resolution of an effect despite that part being optional to pop. Um, to keep that in mind. And I'm just checking his monsters here um, in the graveyard, like the the Synchro and the XYZ, just to make sure that uh, that they don't do anything in the graveyard. Uh, you know, cards these days have such long text, I think it's always important just to double track and be aware. A lot of the times you'll find yourself playing against like rogue decks like these and they'll have some weird random lingering effect or some kind of, uh, you know, trigger effect that, that happens when your opponent does something. Like, you just want to make sure that you're putting yourself in a favorable position. So he ends up, uh, you know, I end up going Heat Leo afterwards. For whatever reason here, I don't know if I'm uh, planning on just like relinking here or doing whatever else. But I think I mainly did that just because I wanted another spot for Jaguar, as opposed to just burning a random Sunlight Wolf. So let's see what we do here. Uh, we end up making a Bay Lynx, and we go into Crusadia Avermax. And I keep forgetting on this guy that like with with Mirage Stallion, if you do happen to actually use it, it can't get its effect. It's not a big deal because it's still bigger than his monster. It still can't be targeted. So. I believe I end up using Will here to get out my Heat Leo. And I think I was doing some calculations here and we're just double checking in. I was like, oh, my monster's not going to gain that, uh, you know, the attack boost because you can't use it because of Mirage Stallio. But nonetheless, it's still my, my guy's actually really big here. So I can just run his monster over, um, attack with my other monsters, 18, 19, and 23. Um, you know, that's one of the few ways. That's one of the things, like, Avermax has just been super clutch for me lately, man. Almost across every matchup. And once again, I end up going Super Poly, discard Super Poly. This is like, it's funny. I draw Super Poly in the matchups where I don't really actually want it. I didn't really have many cards aside in this matchup. I don't even think I sided against him. And, like, I don't draw it in the matchups where I need it and have to draw it. So, that's it. If you guys enjoyed this match, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you duels next time. Take it easy, my friends. And that has been another duel video. Take care, guys.